Welcome to the Friends with Money podcast, brought to you by Money Magazine, creating financial freedom for Australians since 1999. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Friends with Money podcast. My name is Tom Watson and I'm a senior journalist here at Money Magazine. It's great to be with you all. If you were seeking financial information or advice, where would you go? It's a situation that most of us have probably been in, so perhaps you've turned to a family member or a friend for their opinion. Maybe you've wanted professional advice, so you've sought out an advisor or a planner. For plenty of people though, especially in recent years, the most convenient route to take has been to head online, where dedicated finance blogs and podcasts and social media accounts have attracted huge and passionate communities. The future of some of those communities is very much in jeopardy though, following a recent move by regulator ASIC to crack down on people who talk about financial products online without a license. So to get into the changes and to look at what this might mean going ahead, we are joined by someone who's been directly impacted by this crackdown co-host of the Fire and Chill podcast and founder of the Strong Money Australia blog, Dave Gao. Dave, really appreciate you joining us today, mate. No worries, Tom. Thanks for having me. So before we kind of get into the impact that this has had on you, can you bring us up to speed with what ASIC has recently done? They basically brought out some new guidelines. Uh, I think it's probably a couple of months ago at this stage, and they just wanted to clarify further what can and can't be said online by people who make financial content. So as part of that, uh, I suppose the short story is that they really want to clamp down on the, understandably, like the promo, like, content creators kind of pushing people into certain uh, financial products or certain investments or telling people what they like giving people basically precise recipes on what they should be doing with their money without I guess knowing uh, a whole lot about the people that are on the other end of it but so I suppose the the things that are coming up in that area are the discussion of investments but then also even things like uh, bank accounts and insurances and super funds, like all of these things are considered um, financial products in one way or another. So it's been it's become quite evident that from from the guidelines that they really don't want people to be discussing even what they're doing in their own personal lives. So it's not just about, oh hey, here's here's which super fund I recommend because it's what I like and whatever. It's not even like, oh, here's the best option for which uh, which bank account to use and all that. It's it's even it's even going as far as to say um, you can't you can't record your journey. Say you're building up wealth and you're documenting what you're doing along the way, just to kind of keep yourself accountable, but then also to share what you're learning along the way. And if you discuss specific things like what I just uh, described, that's now deemed you're not allowed to do that, uh, regardless if you're intending to influence people on the other end or not. That seems like a, a seriously broad spectrum there. And it seems quite harsh for someone, as you just mentioned, who might just be wanting to share their own journey um, without mm. being overly prescriptive about which financial products they're potentially recommending or not. But I, I, I get the sense that this might have been targeting a particular group of people, but as you've explained, it, it's, it's had a much wider impact, obviously. So, um, so can you maybe tell us a bit about, you know, first of all, why you set up your blog and your podcast in the first place, what you were trying to achieve with that, and then I guess um, the action that you've had to take following this ASIC crackdown. Uh, about five years ago now, I started my blog just, uh, well, it started as a hobby really because I'd been able to leave full-time work at that point at a pretty early age. So I'd, you know, I'd kind of learnt quite a lot over my uh, eight or 10 years of, of saving and investing and trying to build wealth. So I wanted to 
to pass that on, to just share what I learned along the way and even what I continue to learn as I, as I go along my journey. So that was the idea behind starting the blog. It's really just to, to kind of share with the online community uh, my experience and hopefully that would benefit them and they mm. could they could maybe take some of those lessons that I'd learned and use them in their own financial lives. So that was that was the idea. And then a few years after that, I um, I partnered up with a buddy, another blogger actually in the financial independence space. And we so we teamed up and started a podcast just to have discussions that are a bit more in depth than your average article about mm. different topics relating to uh, financial independence and all the things that we kind of wanted to share with other people that um, could benefit them too. So that's how that came about as well. Obviously, it, it, it's not been a, a, a positive um, outcome for you guys uh, in, in terms of this, uh, this crackdown. Yeah, so we actually decided to, I think pretty much everyone in this space has taken a pause at the moment for the last couple of months as everyone tries to figure out what they what they can and can't do maybe going forward and whether or not they even continue doing any of this online content at all. So we decided to, like we talked about it for quite a while and we actually decided to stop making the podcast. Wow, yeah. Because we, we felt that although as much as we enjoyed it, as much as we do and the, the feedback from people was that it was quite helpful, it just became hard to imagine how we were going to create the same kind of content and voice the same kind of opinions on certain things without uh, breaking these guidelines and it between us we just decided that it's probably better we just kind of close close this chapter because it just didn't seem feasible moving forward and especially when you're on something like a podcast where the conversations are more free-flowing and it's more Mm. casual there's much more chance that you Go, you kind of take a wrong turn and go down and and you say something that you're not supposed to now because you're just casually chatting with a friend and it just so happens that there's a bunch of people listening to it as well. So we felt that that risk was was quite high that we would inadvertently say something that was perhaps against the rules now and um, that we that we'd get in trouble for it. So yeah, we just felt that the restrictions were a little bit too much and we just decided to discontinue that project. And what's uh what's been the uh the response from your your listeners and and your readers as well after that? Upset from what I can uh, from what I can gather, we we had a lot of people reach out to us to say thank you for making the podcast. I think we got up to fifty episodes or so. Right. Um. Mm. So yeah, it was just a lot of um a lot of gratitude, I suppose, for making the podcast in the first place, and a bit of frustration as well, uh, on the end of the the listener that they were going to uh, miss out on that in the future. And then also something that come up again and again was the people who who follow our content, they basically know what we know. So they're more or less listening as a source of entertainment, but they they really expressed a lot of frustration at the people who were who were going to be trying to learn about this stuff in the future, that those are the people who would miss out because obviously if they've been following the content, they kind of know they've built up a, a knowledge base for themselves. So they were a bit more concerned or or frustrated that perhaps their kids or their, the younger people coming up weren't going to have access to the same kind of information freely online that they've had uh, the opportunity to to use. So this is the kind of potential long-term ramifications of this is that there won't be this kind of readily available, easily accessible, you know, information online without, I assume, having to pay for it. Yeah, that's that's definitely a possibility. And even if it's, um, I mean, the, the content can still be online if it's, I suppose, if it's produced by someone or if it's hosted by someone who has a financial license, mm. which 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 is fine. But then I guess there's also the, it could create the issue where the person who's licensed has a higher threshold. Obviously, they've got licensing fees and compliance costs and all of these things. So there's much more incentive there 
for them to need to make a living out of whatever they're doing whereas the the person who's just creating content for free and 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 doesn't have like a all these ongoing costs in the background and a business to run they're much less likely to be um, biased by that and they're not reliant on that that as a business income i guess yeah definitely and and so i i feel like your case dave uh, is obviously a little bit different to someone who might be say peddling cryptocurrency um and really looking to take advantage of um people who don't have the required knowledge to invest in something like that whereas mm. you're it seems very much like you're just sharing your journey um your own financial journey and sadly those people weren't aren't helped by this guideline at all because cryptocurrency is not covered under under the guidelines interesting i <laughs> So uh, that's everyone's still allowed free free reign in that territory. Apparently, apparently that's all fine. I I feel like we could chat about this for uh, an hour or so, but um, sadly we'll we'll have to <laughs> draw a uh, draw a line under it for now. But it's it, it's been a real pleasure having you on, Dave, and and thanks for kind of explaining the situation and also sharing your experience. I think it's um it's really valuable for everyone to hear about, and we really appreciate you um yeah coming on today. No worries. Thanks, Tom. And if you're interested uh, in learning a little bit more about the FIRE movement and uh, Dave's own journey to financial independence, then uh, go and get your hands on a copy of the April edition of Money Magazine, where Dave was featured in our cover story. Also, don't forget that if you enjoy listening to the Friends of Money podcast, we'd love you to uh, recommend it to your own friends and family, or you can help us out by leaving a review on iTunes or the Apple Podcast app. You can also send in any questions, comments, or even topics you'd like us to cover to our dedicated email, which is podcast at moneymag.com. .au. And last but not least, make sure you head over to moneymag.com.au for all the latest financial news and stories. That's it for this episode of the Friends with Money podcast. I'm Tom Watson. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Friends with Money podcast. For credible, independent and easy to understand financial commentary, visit moneymag.com.au. Please remember that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are general in nature and further independent advice and research based on your personal circumstances should be sought before making an investment decision.